interview that Portia Gabo of TV3 News had with the Education Minister yesterday. Now, he touched on a few things concerning e-learning, the possibility of uh, students writing their exams online, and also having their third-term assessment or the, the, the one-year assessments being the, um, you know, the, the thing to look out for in terms of promoting them to the next level. As I take a look at this interview, still TV3 New Day. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about some disruptions in the educational sector, even though some educational institutions have moved online and that some sort of learning is ongoing. Um, what is the ministry looking at? Um, what new innovations are you looking at in case this pandemic continues into June, July, August? The new coronavirus, COVID-19, has brought in its wake a need to relook really at our way of life. The COVID-19, even though we realize that it is not killing a lot of kids and young people, it has certainly killed even two-month-old babies. And when the outbreak happened in Ghana, we all realized how Ghanaians charged on governments. Why are you, why are you keeping schools closed? Even when government, with a good information, good intelligence, good vision decided to keep only BC and SSC students, was student, final year student in class. We had trade unions, teacher unions. Oh, close down the school. Even when government has information to do what is right, so the public pressure, because they are schools, government would have to find a way of listening to the public pressure as well as responding. What are we doing in the education ministry? And what is happening all over the world? Ghana is not an island. Um, all education has moved on to distance learning. I've said that COVID-19 has brought education into the 21st century, where technology is becoming imperative to teach. But we still cannot do away with the teacher. So the parents, acting as parents at home now, should act as teachers for the kids. Because we can't put a teacher in every home. But there's already a teacher in every home, I bet, untrained. That is the parent. So we have to come up with programs that will support both the parent, the pupil or student, and the teacher and the whole system. We are a poor country, a developing country, a country with big ideas. But there are certain things we can't do. Now some teachers in the private sector are complaining about where their next paycheck is coming. I've had I've been inundated with requests that teachers in the private sector want to be paid. It is not only teachers in the private sector who have been affected. Every Ghanaian has been affected. And certainly government cannot afford to pay everybody at home. We in the Ministry of Education, with our agencies, the universities or tertiary institutions acting through National Council for Tertiary Education and the Ghana Education Service have a standing committee now um, coming out with ideas and areas and policies and actions that can lead to continuing of education. So if you realize almost all the universities have rolled out virtual education. That in its own has its own problem. Uh, accessibility, depending upon where you are, cost of data. Uh, we have to employ television, which we have started. Uh, stations that see that training of the Ghanaian child is worth it because it affects the whole country have scrambled channels for us for free. So we've started rolling out uh, TV programs for senior high school. Uh, we have rolled out the iCampus that every senior high school child can log on and have access to the core subjects and other open educational resources that are relevant to their areas of study for free. So when you have no data cost and you have free content and teachers teaching virtual laboratories all there, I think you have no excuse not to learn. Uh, the basic schools, KG to junior high school, were virtually going on vacation the Easter vacation, and they were supposed to report back to school on the 4th of May. 
Uh, we are collaborating with a lot of agencies who have given us a lot of programs that are in line with the new curriculum. That by the time school reopens, if they can't get to school, we will start rolling out programs both on online and on TV for that, as well as radio programs, which we are taking a, a longer time in deploying. Uh, but we will roll out radio programs, roll out TV programs, roll out online programs virtually for KG to senior high school so that education can continue. Communities where accessibility is a challenge, rural communities, how are you hoping to reach out to them? If you look at the three modems that I've spoken about, radio goes everywhere, TV goes everywhere. So you hope that one of these channels will be available. We have no doubt that there will still be one or two places, or, but they are the fewer uh, where it's going to be a challenge. And that's why I'm encouraging parents to actively see how they can support their children. Uh, if it means your child is going to stay with their cousin for some time to be able to go to school. After all, the child travels every day, uh, some distance to go to school, as in school eight hours of the day. So it is in our interest to support our children as parents to enable and support government in what government is doing. Just like we are asking private uh, companies and persons to also support us in the, any way that is possible. But how are we going to assess students? What you have to understand is that till we are free of the coronavirus, which we are not, the government is easing restrictions, but the bans are being extended. I don't see the, 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 the time soon when all restrictions are going to be moved. And some of the last places that it would affect is schools. We have to be assured of the fact that we are taking vulnerable kids to school. And it is not going to be a center for the spread of the disease. We do know that a lot, 80 percent of those who get the disease don't show any symptoms. But they are the vehicles for the spread. Like I said somewhere, if the human being doesn't move, the virus doesn't move. Schools, opening schools, will bring a lot of movement across the country. And that may be the vehicle for the disease to come back and hit us hard. So schools are the ones that we are going to be careful before we open. Like I said, our way of life now includes social distancing. And so the schools should come up with things that would ensure that physical distancing can happen. In some countries, every child is wearing a face mask or a nose mask. So we have to think carefully through what. There are suggestions that we should open school in phases. If it's possible, we'll look at it. Let only BEC and SSC students go, write their exams, and go back home uh, fully. The parents don't want them in school, but it was left with exams week for them to come back home. So parents would have to <laughs> be welcoming of their kids uh, going back to school. But if we are able to run an exam or an assessment for BEC students to be able to go to SS, for SS students to be able to leave, then there can be spaces in the schools as we continue. But uh, first, first, class one children two should go to school in September. So we, we, there's a lot of planning that is going on. When I come to BEC, BEC is an exam WAIC does on behalf of Ghana government. BEC is done only in Ghana. Uh, so we'll see how we can manage with BEC and how when it will be done. If the COVID prevents us from mass gatherings, then it's going to be difficult to write the exams. Likewise for the final year SHS3 students. In some countries that are well resourced with even smaller class sizes than us, they've come out knowing that education is probably the last they can toy with, said so they're going to be not going to be A-level. The UK, they've cancelled it. They've taken some bold decisions. This year, there's not going to be A-level. This year, we are not going to have our local, gov local government elections. UK has said that uh, because they see that the end is not 
near. Other countries like South Korea have been able to do that. Uh, but it's the, one of the most organized societies. Uh, so we have to look at that. If NYIC SSS3 exams is a West African exam, is done in Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Gambia, and is that examination body that has suspended exams? So they cannot come and do it for only Ghana, Wasi. So if even in Ghana we are free and we can do an exam, we have to go back to Waik and say, can you do a Ghana exam for us? Nigeria, apart from Waik, they do have a national exam as well. That is done only in Nigeria. That is able to take the Nigerian student to go to university and work. Our educational reform, curricular reform, is getting to that stage. That's why I was misquoted as a uh, high school diploma. And Nigeria has the Ajam and NECO exams. Uh, that is, takes, allows people to go and get employed with those certificates and go to university as well. Uh, and that is the way to go. Uh, we don't need six passes to, to start working. Six passes and co are what the university people need for you to come and continue working, uh, studying in the university. It is not for going to look for work in police, immigration, civil service. That is not what you need. So the curricular reform is leading to a stage where we will have a national exam, uh, give a certificate that if you don't like to go on, you can go and work. Previously in Ghana, we had a middle school leaving certificate. That was a certificate when you finished, you used to go and work. You didn't have to go to university. And if you're in the middle school and you wanted to go to secondary school, you wrote the sent common entrance in Form 2 and go to secondary school. If you finished O-level, you used your O-level to go and look for work. If you want to go to university, you went ahead and did the A-level. So A-level was an university entrance exam. So, and they used to accept people to work with O-level certificates. In Ghana, we had a national certificate called SSC, which we cancelled, I don't know why. But we will have to, through our curricular reform, come back to that, so that we can address the peculiar needs of this country, irrespective of what is happening elsewhere. So if Ghana can lift restrictions, and we can have an exam, whereas the others haven't, then we will have to write a unique Ghana exam, just like the BEC. If we can't, then we have to look for an assessment we can all agree with. That will still take our students to the university. But I will assure Ghanaians that this is not the first time it is happening. When I went to secondary school, after A-level, I had to do one year national service. Because they, the other time, the problem had come from the universities. The lectures going on strike for a very long time. So those of us who were doing A-level could not go straight to the university. So we did one year national service. So gradually, all could be absorbed. So everything under the sun will be done to ensure that education continues with the least disruptions as possible. If we have to find an assessment, already in the last 20, 30 years, Waii collects continuous assessment for every school and undertakes uh, statistical standardization or methodology to let it be representative of 30% of your final exam. In UK, such assessments are what the universities are going to rely on to admit. So it can be done.